There's only one interesting question in philosophy. <laughs> what does it mean to live a finite, fragile life in an infinite, eternal universe? Two trillion, two thousand billion galaxies. There aren't any other worlds where this happened. We've seen no evidence of any civilizations out there beyond Earth, and that's a surprise. It's the only place where meaning exists, potentially, <laughs> in a galaxy of 400 billion suns. I mean, in the piece of the universe we can see, uh, there are something like, roughly, two trillion galaxies. Two trillion, two thousand billion galaxies. And each galaxy is, let's say, around the size of the Milky Way. Some are bigger, some are smaller, but the Milky Way has 400 billion stars in it. It takes light over 100,000 years to cross a galaxy. And there are two trillion of them in the piece of the universe we can see. And we're very sure that that piece that we can see is a small bit of what may be an infinite universe beyond. We don't know, actually. And I always say, you know, don't get worried about that because nobody can picture it. It is impossible to visualize the scale of the universe. There's only one interesting question in philosophy. <laughs> the interesting question is, what does it mean to live a finite, fragile life in an infinite, eternal universe? It's a good question. <laughs> what does it mean to live a finite, fragile life in an infinite, eternal universe? And um, I think the answer is, so paradoxically, whilst we are definitely physically insignificant, I've just said, you know, the, the, the Earth is one planet around one star amongst 400 billion stars in one galaxy amongst two trillion galaxies in a small patch of the universe, right? So we're definitely small. And you can't argue with that. We're just specks of dust. But if you think about what we are, so everybody, me and you, everybody, we're, we're just collections of atoms, right? Some of them are as old as time, pretty much, and some of them, were the other ones, everything else other than the hydrogen in our bodies was made in stars, right? So, so we're, we're all cooked over billions of years. And we're in this pattern that can think. So suddenly, as the great Carl Sagan said, you have a means by which the universe understands and explores itself which is us. And that sounds unlikely when you put it like that, <laughs> that you can have a few things that were cooked in the hearts of stars, you stick them together in a pattern and suddenly it has some ideas and starts writing music and, and art and things. That's, that's quite difficult to comprehend, right? But that, what, that happened here, we know that because we're sat here having a conversation. And so the question then becomes, well, on how many other worlds did that happen? And that's where I think the value can come in because uh, it's a reasonable guess, and it's just a guess, right? But it's reasonable. You can make the argument that there aren't any other worlds where this happened, certainly in our galaxy. So it could be that this planet, notwithstanding its physical insignificance, is the only place where anything thinks, right? For, for millions of light years in every direction. Well, suddenly, therefore, you end up considering this planet as being the most valuable place in the local universe notwithstanding the fact that it's small. And that idea, it, it's not just a complete random guess, by the way. We, we've had a bit of a look. We, astronomers have pointed radio telescopes up at the stars for a while, 50 years or more now, and heard nothing. We've seen no evidence of any civilizations out there beyond Earth, and that's a surprise. There's a reasonably plausible explanation for that, which is biology, which is that if you look at the history of life on Earth, then you see that uh, life began pretty much as soon as it could here on Earth. We, we have evidence there was life 3.8 billion years ago, something like that, and the Earth's four and a half billion years old. So pretty much, pretty quick in geological time, you get life. But then if you, if you talk about advanced life, complex life, multicellular life, then there's no evidence at all beyond, uh, back beyond a billion years, actually really in the fossil record, 650 million years ago or something, you start seeing the first evidence of complex creatures. So that means that on, he, on this planet, it took over three billion years to go from single cell life to anything more complex than a single cell. And then another half a billion years or so to go from the multicellular things to a civilization. So it's, it's three and a half to four billion years. It's a third of the age of the universe. That is a really long time. If you say, that's an unbroken chain of life on a little piece of rock in a violent universe, and that chain was not cut for four billion years. 
in order to get us. And that might be a, a big ask, right? We, we live in a really violent universe. You look at the Milky Way and you look at that arc of stars across the sky, 400 billion suns, all, the, all there will be up there at best is slime. It's just slime. <laughs> Nothing, <laughs> right? And, and I think that's a reasonable guess. That's my, that's where I start from. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if that's wrong. Then you go, okay, good, well, fine. The, but at the moment, it looks like there isn't anything else other than slime. We haven't even discovered slime, by the way, yet. <laughs> we, we, we're, we're still in the position where we've not seen anything. <laughs> not even a single cell on Mars or, you know, the moons of Jupiter or somewhere like that. So at the moment, we are alone as far as we can tell. You know, 65 million years ago or so, um, the dinosaurs were pretty much wiped out. And that left a little evolutionary niche for a little thing, shrew-like mammal type thing. And, and ultimately that's why we're here. If, if that hadn't hit and wiped out, cleared the way, we wouldn't be here. You probably wouldn't have a civilization, you would guess. And so, you know, there, there would be none of the things that we just take for granted in, in the potentially the Milky Way galaxy. So if we're the only civilization in the galaxy, then it's, I think it's pretty likely that if that comet hadn't hit 65 million years ago and wiped out dinosaurs, there wouldn't be any civilizations in the galaxy. So nobody, nothing could know anything. <laughs> so none of this knowledge would exist. So that just shows you how <laughs> precarious the position of, of civilization and life is.